And they said, man, Sean looking for you for this versus thing. And I was like, I was like, man, I ain't doing no verses, man. I'm not, I'm not doing, I'm not doing that, man. I'm like battling songwriters, like, no, nah, it sound like it's more of a beat thing. Like, I'm like. Welcome to Answer This Lab Tip T.I. Hair, man. I'm your host, man. And uh, as you already know, we are here to discuss uh, the things that can push the culture and the, and the generation forward and have those conversations with people who are relevant to the discussion. My guest today, as many people may not know, but you know what I'm saying, we grew up in the same neighborhood, actually rode the same school bus at elementary yes. school. And um, we both hail from the Bankhead area. Uh, but he is going on, man, to become a a chart topping number one hit maker and a culture mover. You know what I mean? A culture controller and a culture mover. His name is The Dream, and he just dropped some new shit called Sex Tape Volume Four. Volume Four. Okay. Uh, you, he also put some work in on that uh, the 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 Beyonce appearance when the Queen poked her head out of the castle, man, on that <laughs> big the stallion remix. Now with all of the phenomenal shit, and also currently working on the new Rihanna album, correct? That's always correct. That's that's okay. always a quote. But. Now, of all the, the prolific shit that you've done, bro, and, and all of the legendary artists that you've had a chance to work with, what do you, what do you, do, do you value the most? Oh, uh, wow. This? This right here, what we doing? <laughs> no cap. Like, yeah, what's up? I um, mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, one of the best things I think that, that I could take on this journey is, of course, you know, you go on to meet new friends but your your idea of how you grow up and who you grow up amongst um the people close to you um in a way and it ain't about chilling every day hanging out every day right. but you know when somebody's path is the same as your path and so right. when that's created you usually you usually um it actually calls for the same kind of people that you meet in your life when you leave that place like those mm. it's only them type of um, characters and individuals and, and blessed people that you you meet and run into, and so you don't even have to try hard. Like you just, it's just, it's just how it is. This is the most important part to what we do. I think um, the talent thing is, it, it's of course great. It's a blessing. Um, we don't have no control over that really. You know, you bless with it. You know, you hone in on it, and, and hopefully, you know, my my grandfather had a lot to do with just being serious. Now, right. It took me a while to find out how simple that word serious is. And it was like, man, you're so extreme. You're extreme. Dream, you're so extreme. It was like, I'm not extreme. I mean, I'm just serious. That's I'm, right. I'm ready to go. Yeah, man. I was on a panel uh, the other day with, with, with Ed Gordon, Charlemagne, Van, uh, Van Lathan, and, and uh, Mark Lamont. Yeah, most, a host of others. But one thing that Ed Gordon said that was incredibly profound to me. He said, all of the men that was on that panel were men of consequence. You wow. I mean? To be a man of consequence, you dig what I'm saying? Like, yeah. To be exact, you know what I'm saying? I'm standing in there. I'm standing firm at this, and, and anything outside of this is going to be consequence. Uh, that's, that's, that's it. That's crazy. That's good. Yeah, that, that's, that's, you know, I think that's something that, you know, you can't really teach a motherfucker how to do that. They got to be instinct. Oh, zero. Oh, zero. That's a fundamental zero. instinct that has to be instilled, like, you know, in, in the formidable years. What was it yeah. about Bankhead that you still take with you? Just that cold? Like, don't, like, I always feel like when, when I'm out, like, and I've been in the world a lot, man, and more so, you know, seeing people that look like us and, of course, not taking the idea that because we look the same, that we think the same and that we, you know, that we are the same in that way. But mm -hmm. that was a, that was a cold, though. And I, I believe it's in all of Atlanta, but I, I can only speak on Baker Road where I grew up at on the west side mm -hmm. that right. that that it was just don't touch nothing. Don't touch nobody that ain't touch you. Keep right. your hands to yourself <laughs> like it ain't. Uh, and it's, and just knowing that it was a small world, and that's that consequence you're talking about. It's like right. you can't take something from this. You can't take this caprice 
drive it over here without somebody knowing where you got the caprice from. Right, right. It's a car. And, and you're going to have to deal with the karma to come with that. Period. So you got the karma, but you also got, it's like, you know, do know everybody know everybody. And I think we get outside of, outside of um, where, where I was from and in the world, it's the same thing in the, in the business. As you know, right. everybody know everybody. You can't do, yeah. you do this in this space, it's, yo, you know, everybody just knows everybody. So I think I take with me of knowing that and understanding that and that um, I will hopefully never drop that type of thing from my character, but it's, yeah. it's definitely improved the idea that the laws that existed with how we grew up is outside of just Bankhead, yeah. you know. Shit, man, what, what, what is it, that, what, what moment was it where you can kind of sit back and say that you felt like I done made it? Oh, wow. I still don't feel like that, to be honest. Man, look around you. You see the statue behind you ain't got no arms on it. Little white motherfucker on the mountain piece. <laughs> oh, okay, he been on, okay, now you can see the two Grammys. Oh, okay, the two Grammy back there peeking, they hiding. Oh man, look. That don't mean that like you, you 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 know how <laughs> our mentality works. And you know me, you know me to the T, no pun intended. Like it's 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 just I don't feel I can't get that comfortable. It's weird, man. It's weird yeah. even feeling that way. You know, I think right. man, my kids will feel like they made it before I did, and then them really, I had to jack one of them up. Like, hey, yeah. let me holler at you. <laughs> Let me holler yeah, at you real I, quick. I I ain't never felt like that neither, man. I never felt like I made it. I've had big moments, you know what I'm saying? Right. But as, as soon as that moment was over, when I woke up the next day, it was something different. Yeah. You know it's I mean? like let's go. Yeah. Let's go. It's always let's go a new get moment. Yeah, and, and I and I enjoy it, and I enjoy it through through other people. I just I just feel like um I feel like we still at work. Or at least I feel like mm. I'm still at work. You know what I'm saying? Like ain't no retirement parade happening. And when you made it is when you can retire and do the same thing you've been doing. That's right. When you ain't got to work and your lifestyle don't change. Period, it don't change nothing. Matter of fact, you just go up. It's only, <laughs> you just get more time to do more shit. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's when you made it. Yeah. Now, if anybody follows you, you know what I'm saying, on Instagram or whatnot, they'll see that you have, you know what I'm saying, some real high class hobbies and shit, you know? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you. <laughs> You're an avid golfer. I am. As we golfing know, during, you, you know I love quarantine. That's so funny you asked that. I just set up a tea time tomorrow with Chris Hicks. And so <laughs> I'm making sure that Chris Hicks stays six feet away from me. So that just hey, tells man. you what's get what's gonna get me out the house, right? So I'm I'm you just said avid and you are exactly right. I was trying to figure <laughs> out how am I gonna how am I gonna practice social distancing? So I called up to the people like, yo, what y'all doing up there? You know, who's all It's like, look, Mr. Nash, you know, this is what we're doing. Everybody got their own cart. Everybody start at a certain time. You wait for a minute, and then you start after them. <clears throat> Nobody's on the tee box at the same time. I said, like, all right, perfect. I'm good. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. Hell no, nah, man. I think that's probably the first time in history I'd heard a bank here nigga say tea, tea time. Uh, hey, come on! You well, you heard yourself said, say it first. I mean, maybe maybe tea time, but not. No, no, you not, said not, we got that tea, tea time. time. You, yeah, come on, man! I remember one time we played, <laughs> and and literally we did you over there. Chastain, right? We, yeah, we we played. No, we played in L.A. That show did. And we we left there racing. What you? What was yeah. you in the Lambo? And I was in the Rory. I had the, I had the Aventador. What, what you had the Ferrari? Or some shit? I had the I had the 458. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I was like, who? What's the chances of this racing down the 101? <laughs> hey man, <laughs> racing down the 101. I'm talking about hundreds and hundreds of miles per hour going right. through a motherfucking golf course somewhere in Calabasas. Right, Calabasas. There it is. <laughs> You so, yeah, you heard yourself say tea time before, so that's it. <laughs> hey, look, right? Everybody was tuned in to your versus match with uh with Sean Garrett. Oh, yeah, that. I, 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 forgot, I, almost, I almost forgot. <laughs> <laughs> man, you hell, bro. <laughs> you hell, man. 
Hey, look, how did that come about? Oh man, man, you you know me, man. I don't I don't go looking for no trouble, man, with nobody. I just don't. I welcome the attention though, but I don't look okay. for no trouble. Yeah. Uh, Tim Timbo and Swiss hit me on the phone. They're like, "Yo, mm -hmm. man, you got looking for you." And I'm like, "Looking for me?" And immediately, of course, I go straight to West Side. Like, like, what you mean, looking for looking for me? What? What? what, what <laughs> looking for me means a whole different thing. I don't even understand what you're saying right now. What are y'all talking about? But I forgot they were so rich that they forgot looking for you means a whole other thing. So. It's like he looking for you, and they said, "Man, Sean looking for you for this versus thing." And I was like, "I was like, man, I ain't doing no verses, man. I'm not, I'm not doing, I'm not doing that, man. I'm like battling songwriters, like, no, nah, I sound like it's more of a beat thing, like I'm not." And so, Swiss so said, "Nah, man, come on, man, you got to come on. It's for the culture. When he hit you with that culture line, yeah. you start thinking like, talking like, man, you know what? All right, all right, people in the house, let me. Okay, cool, yeah, you're right, you're right. Let's do it." And I said, "I'll do it um, if we can, you know." Um, make it about. I think the thing was donating twenty five thousand to coronavirus victims mm. and stuff or whatever. So that was my main reason for for even you know getting into it and doing it. But that's how it came about. I wasn't you know like I, I know Sean was like yo he looking for me. I was like on my mother who rests in heaven. Zero mm. truth. Like no nobody's looking for nobody to have no no battle with. Stop it. <laughs> Man, but did, but how did you feel about the battle overall after it had, you know? After, I felt after that, I, I felt it was great for all of the people that that do write music and produce music, you know, that that when it lends itself to credit about yeah. what things, you know, and understanding and the blessings that, you know, I, I'm blessed for for somebody like Rihanna, Rihanna or Beyonce, to, you know, to sing my records, man, to do records alongside you, Jay, um, Yay, like uh, Pusha. Like all, just the whole whole world of people that I respect and love, like to be able to wake up and have a chance at doing it, not even about doing it, just having a chance, like to even right. send that direct, you know, like, hey, Tip, I got an idea. You know, like that's that's a, that's a the blessing in itself. You got a chance, you got a shot, you know? Right. So, so, so that part is amazing for me. And on the flip side of that, uh, though, there's a job that I have to do. There's uh -huh. something that I'm, you know, I get a call to do. It's the reason why the call comes in. And so I think more people got a preview of the idea and identity of what happens in that space that they had right. no idea about, you know, before. And I've been fighting for that since I, since I started uh, this thing. And to just see something like that kind of have people checking back in. Because when we grew up, we all we looked at was credits. We wanted to know who did it. That's real. Yeah, who, who made the, the beat? Yeah, we knew, we knew, we knew who JD, JD was before JD knew who we were. Like, it's like, it's like, yeah, yo, absolutely. who did this record? You know, so that's who you want on your album. I'm sure you was doing the same. Like, okay, I'm doing my first joint with, who's do, who's DJ Toon? Like, cool, bet. Let me get, <laughs> let me get them, let me get them. Yeah. Shit, though, I mean, like, did you experience the versus effect? Uh, because, did you, you, you watch the Teddy Riley babyface shit? I kind of tuned it. I tuned into the first one. Once the echo came on, I was I was good, man. Cause to me, it just made me like. Then that's the bougie part of me. I just couldn't do the echo thing, man. I was like, I can't. I'm sorry. I want to be here. I want my my number on the thing to count because I tuned in. But I was like, I couldn't do it. So when they said the second one was happening, I started to. And I was just like, I ain't, I can't. I can't do it. Like this is just gonna, I know what it's gonna you be. You couldn't though. even get on there from your phone. Yeah, you can't get on from your phone. The bandwidth was crazy. Um, it yeah. exposed a lot of things. Um, yeah. And me and Swiss had a long conversation about that. Um, I can't, I can't be op open to the discussions of what happened, but you know, yeah, fig it. figuring Big something out. Shit. We understand. Yeah. Big money shit. Yeah. We understand. <laughs> uh, but, but it's just one of those um, things where I just couldn't watch it again. You know, it's like. I, and I didn't really care who won. The great thing <laughs> is, is how I was should have been, and which is why I kind of advocated for the idea, like, stop calling it a battle. Like, right. the great thing is, this music is incredible. Like, usually, a per, there's no music battle. Everybody's talking about top five and top this. I was like, there are moments in mm. your life, you know, there's no one top five moment or no one. There was a Tupac song for this moment. That's right. number one. There's a biggie uh, moment for this thing, a uh, song for this moment. So 
there's no one song because if if I say, "Oh, Dear Mama is my favorite song," that means I'm I'm just sad every day. Like I'm sad. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, yeah. Like, no, nah, that ain't it. Right. You know, there's a there's an Atlanta moment. There, there's just too many things, and I think that people try so much to um, pit things against. They feel like it has to be Everybody some type of competition, competition. everything. Everybody yeah. loves the competition. Everybody want to show up and watch a fight, whatever kind of fight it is. You know what I mean? <laughs> whatever kind of fight. Whatever kind of fight train, it train is, man. A fight, a race, uh, you know what I'm saying? Any yeah. kind of competition where you can put one person against another and, and, and try to figure out who's best. Uh, right. But the versus effect, though, they say that the streams of each of the uh, – uh, participants, Teddy Riley and Willie Betafate, they 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 shot up in a uh, social media presence. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they they had a a, a, a hundred two hundred fifty percent increase in that. Uh, they had a percentage increase in their streams. So basically, and I should have went last then. You dig what I'm saying? That's why so I asked you, I said, you had you so, received so, the versus so I think, effect. I think we set it off. Once well, now you need out, to, but you need you, you probably need to just do it again. I need to do it again. <laughs> that's, that's, who would you right. who would you think is a better, more formidable opponent to you aside from Sean Gary? Who would you oh, like? Wow. To, who would you like to play your record uh, before and after? I would like to get beat by. <laughs> 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 I would like to get beat by Lionel Richie. That's what I would Ooh. like. I would like Dang. my ass whooped by Lionel. That's that's what I, that's what I want. You're a pain free. Yeah, yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I think, but you know what? I think that's what it boils down to when you're dealing with that. It's how many records do you have that were were in people's lives that they can remember where they were when they first heard it. Right. It ain't always necessarily about who sold the most records or who had, you know what I mean? That's all I've been, Tip, that's all I've been saying. I'm like, yo, that's not the end all be all to things. There are things I heard in my childhood. You grow up and find out, oh, that one hit. <laughs> you like, it right. was a hit in my life. Like, I don't know right. what you're talking about. You know, right. uh, one of my best records still to this day is, um, um, uh, rhythm of the night and like even though you know of course I, i'm sure it was a claim hit i don't know where it was on the chart like i wasn't checking checking for that like all i all i can remember is my mom singing it singing the shit out of it. like that's it right you know you can't you can't tell me to this day the goddamn uh do you hear what i hear oh man what that boom, that boom, that boom. You can't tell me. Oh, I like that, that boom yeah. and them cars that be booming down the street. Yeah. What? Yeah. You, can't, you cannot you can't tell me tell any me. Kilo song basically ain't a smash. <laughs> I don't know what you you're talking tell about. Tell me that ain't no motherfucking hit. Tell me it's not. There's this white girl in town <laughs> naming cocaine. You can't tell me. If you telling me there's a chart. Love it, and, and you didn't say that was on your chart, we probably actually couldn't even be free. Look, got that, that motherfucking love in her mouth with Big Boy. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, Kilo is actually. Uh, uh, He's one of the founders of that whole, that thing? That thing. Yeah. That, you, that, um, you that, that pop thing. sheen on top of that nigga shit? Yeah. Kilo. Yeah. Period. Yeah. He was the first motherfucker that, you know what I'm saying, took that, uh, what was that? The Dirty Dancing Man. Sit down, son. Dance up for Dance money. Up for money. Like, nigga wasn't doing that shit then. Nigga wasn't taking old records and completely switching them up and making them ghetto for the hood. Like nigga wasn't really doing that if the keto and, did. And I think the crazy thing is that the world heard it because at that time they had Freak Nick on lock then. Like so everybody was here. Right. Anybody in the culture, I remember talking to Puff one time about um Atlanta and we was talking about fashion and getting into certain shit. And he was like, I was like, yeah, you know, Atlanta, like, niggas be talking about, like, I remember when 2000 came, niggas like, oh, these niggas got big T's on and shit. I was like, cut 10 years later, JaVinci making big T's and ain't nobody saying right. shit. But before right. that, we was Bama ass niggas. Like, before that, it's like, yeah. what the fuck are niggas doing? Now everybody shit oversized. That was 20 years ago. 
I done fought that fight, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I mean, so, Puff, so Puff said, summer, listen, man, spending summers in New York in the 80s, coming from Atlanta was not no fucking walk in the park. Probably not. <laughs> you have to, I mean, continuously fight to defend your culture. Period. Continuously. Period. And, yeah, but you know what I'm saying? You know, a but no, but Puff was, one of the, Puff was one of the ones that said, like, no, nah, I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, yo, we would come down to Atlanta on weekends. Nigga, that's where the niggas were. Niggas was dressed from top to bottom. Like, nigga, that's where the shit came from. And it was right. crazy because I'm like, well, who are these niggas in the middle? Which basically leads me back to the point of, don't be listening to them niggas. Niggas don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> Just listen yeah, to the dope niggas. Like, you, you, you are one of the... Um talented people who have mastered the art of delivering fuck it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It's a very, because it's fuck a, it to the world like no other. And you are very honest about yourself, even down to the writings in your music. Um, I remember uh, when, of course, you had a very public breakup, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and I have it no other way, Tip. I have no other way. <laughs> you had a very public breakup. And then Hey, I'm on single. A, on your album, when you dropped your album, right? You said uh you were talking about a uh 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 what is you said a little rap nigga who had took your girl and would treat her better than you was treated. Right. And you and you said you brought that on yourself. Right. Very humble of you, sir. Where did you get such humility, man? Where Where did you become so gracious? Man, you know what, man? People love a fight. They love a race. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I'm just trying. I try to stay and remain honest about um about every everything in my life. Um, and it's yeah. funny. The funny thing is. Is that particular? Um, I know exactly what what song and to the lyric and to the to the pinpoint of what that is. And and in this it, it, at this time in this particular place that I was in, it wasn't that it was an actual rap guy. It was literally this space that I was in. I think in high school where uh, I went to a prom, and the girl I went to the prom with decided to go back with her ex. Right? Like, mm -hmm. oh, cool. I'm gonna go. And and so that was a defining moment in my life, which Damn. said to myself, humbling as, as we could say, but we all know things go one way or another. It's like cutting Jordan from the, from the basketball team. Like probably right. was the worst thing that anybody could do and the best thing you could do at the same time. That's right. So I made a decision to myself, oh, I ain't, this ain't ever happening again. There's zero <laughs> way that this type of thing that you even think about walking out of my life mm. and being okay with it. Like, nah, mm -mm, not happening. And I don't wait around just to see, like, okay, cool, let's see. Let's see what Damn. happens. Because I've already experienced, know that I don't like to experience that space of, of, um, of hurt and despair because of something that I didn't do fully or that I wasn't serious right. about something. So... Yeah, I put it on on the other person. I put the pay. I was like, oh, cool. Well, if it is a competition, I'm winning. I'm up. <laughs> I'm up by twenty. What you do? What you doing? Okay, hey, cool. Hey man, uh, I just, I could really just just thumb through your lyrics, man, and just take parts out that kind of intrigue me, man, and just make me be. I, I'd be like, man, I wonder what this nigga was thinking about that. Oh God, don't you take no more lyrics, man. <laughs> <laughs> I already get ran up on enough. Like, hey, you talking about me? Like, no, nah, hey. uh, see, no, nah, no, nah, not really, just a little bit. Damn. So, so you, so you pull from just life, your life experiences, and just put that shit to music. Uh, are they are there real, true to life experiences, or is it just kind of you, you, you kind of? enhance it with your with your with your skill set no no there there it's it's a 98 percent truth barrier to exact on my lyrics and when it comes down to what i'm saying two percent usually two percent of it is usually an analogy for something or someone else okay so i kind of replace that person with a person you know it's like 
when you do a movie and they say, okay, cool, this is what the movie is about, but for for certain events, we got to change this name to this. Or right. the same to thing protect, hasn't happened, but it has happened a different way. To protect the innocent. There you go. And the guilty. Definitely the guilty. <laughs> Come on, man. Shit. Hey, look, right. So you had a you had a huge hand in 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 uh, legendary historical albums, uh, one of which being Watch the Throne. Yes, yes. So, man. um, what was that process like? You know, what I'm saying when you get man, I wasn't, and- I wasn't, Tip, I wasn't even supposed to be on that on that album. I, I don't want to say I wasn't supposed to be. It sounds crazy. Um, that it wasn't the around it, listening to it, in it, thinking about it, helping out where I can, suggestions, yes. Like, you know, when, when artists have an idea and it feels like it gets into the realm of what dream is, then cool. Um, right. If not, if not, that was a defining moment in, in a thing that I was trying to do. Uh, and it just worked itself out. So um, Holy Grail was done at a certain point in time for, for, for Jay. And this was at the same time they was they was wrapping up Watch the Throne. Okay. And and um and so Jay played the record though when I guess they was getting ready to mix our master um Watch the Throne as it was. And after Jay played it, you know, Jay was like, yo, we need that for this. You, and you know, <laughs> you know this just from for you know, you working on your album. It ain't over. Right. The album ain't closed till the album's closed. Until it, it, it's done, until it's out. It gotta be out. And even if it's out, even if it's on the way to being out, right. like time out, time out. Right. We, need, we gotta get this one on. So it was one of those records. And all I remember was I was in Newport golfing. And at the same time I was <laughs> I was um writing nineteen seventy seven, which is an album that I did. I was I was doing right. that at the same time. And my good friend Chaka Pilgrim called. And she was like, I need you need to come to New York right now. And I'm like, New York? I'm not coming to New York. Do you know where I am right now? Like, no. <laughs> Zero. I'm not coming. I feel great. I wake up at 7 a.m. every morning to play golf. I'm over here writing incredible music. No, yeah. I'm not leaving. I don't nobody Newport, can call me tell Newport, me. Newport where? Newport, California. Okay. Orange <laughs> County. So I'm over there doing my joint. She calls back. She said, Hey bro, we need you to come over here writing another holy grail. I hear Jay in the background like, yeah, he's going to get one out of his trunk and just just pull it out. He's just going to magically appear. There's no writing another Holy Grail. There's Holy Grail, and that's it. And so, um, of course, I ended up taking the flight because most yeah. of the time I'm just bullshitting. Of course, like somebody needs me to do something, I'm, I'm going to figure out how to get it done. So I took the flight up there, and Ye was working on – Ye had started reworking on, on some stuff and Otis was the first thing I heard when I walked in the track and I was like wow mm. it's like that thing right there nasty the next thing he played was um um no church in a while mm. um and it, it, it Frank Frank was there Frank Frank Ocean was there and he was co- recording his part and I was like oh that thing right oh that's crazy man Went into the next room. He's like, all right, cool. Let me know if you hear something on this, though. Like, there's another, you know, part here, there, whatever. And I was like, all right, cool. I was like, but y'all really got it. Like, y'all don't really need me to be here to do nothing. And I put that part on the song. I didn't look back. Me, Jay, uh, me, me and Jay went to get something to eat that day. The day's a wrap. Two, cut two months, three months later, whenever the record came out, Chaka called me and said, man, you sound great on this, um, on this Watch the Throne album. It sounds great. Mm. We had to listen in New York. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, yo, part. I'm like, I ain't got no part. I, don't, I ain't heard nothing about. That's the part that everybody hears today. It was that part yeah. that was decided to, to be kept by you know both of those guys, and I ended up with a Grammy for it. So that's fine. Just goes to show you. That one of the motherfuckers you got behind you, man. I don't know which two of those actually. And you can't be pop, pop your shit now. No, that's uh. One of those is put a ring on it, and one of them is all of the lights. Okay. Oh, you have another Grammy section. 
Yeah, it's one over there. I think the one that says that is on the other side of it. It's over here, Mike. <laughs> I don't know why you won't make me do calling me out like this. You hey, know man, what I'm saying? One thing about a bankhead, nigga, he can't wait to pop this shit. Now. Can't wait he to can't pop shit up. Man, man can't wait what? to pop that shit. There you go. There it is. You know what I'm saying? Best rap song collaboration 2012. So, how does that shit feel to have such an organic experience to wind up being celebrated by the highest of the 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 courts in 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 music? Man, I, I, every day, man, it's still like a it's still like a dream world. To be honest, man, like the the, the physical things I think you get to do in life for other people to help you know aunts and uncles out and and and, and people in your immediate family and try to be the person that. Um, that my grandfather was to everybody is right. one part to be held up in the, in the industry as a thing. I don't even like it. I don't even like discussing anything that I feel like I'm not worthy of discussing yet. You know, so so it's and that has something to do with my own plan. Like, of, of course, it's a blessing to be able to achieve a, a certain thing and such a thing at, at such an early age. But somebody will ask me something and I'll tell them like um, Quincy Jones didn't do Thriller till he was like 50. Mm. Like, okay, so what you saying is, is like I'm saying what that says. I haven't Still even got reached. great shit to be done. You have to get yeah, I, I ain't even there yet. I'm like, yeah. I'm young. Don't be don't call me for no lifetime, nothing. I don't want to hear nothing about <laughs> nothing. I'm 12. <laughs> I'm 12, I ain't done shit. <laughs> you know? Yeah, shit, yeah, man. Like the sound for the dream like because you have a distinctive sound bro the radio killer sound yeah yes I mean? uh how did that develop into what it is right now because before because yeah. before man first i remember you and our Kelly were going back and forth over who was you know what i'm saying this that and the other i think you know he was kind of trying to keep the door closed on you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> I would never, ever, ever. You kind of had that got your boot in there. Huh? You had got your boot. You know when niggas trying to close the door and you put your boot in there? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kelly was trying to lock everybody out, by the way. It was like, ah, uh, hold up, hold up. Uh, but yeah, no, nah, I would never challenge anything any of those guys did before then, man. Like, like any of them. Like, I just appreciate the, the musical part you know, of what, what they did, especially for me in the nineties, man. That was our those were our that was our decade. You know, like that was the greatest that was the greatest that was the, those were the greatest years for music to me. Period. All That's around. R and B, hip hop, everything. Those were the greatest years of music. Period. And so any art it Joe to see man, I can remember I can pinpoint. Like it's just it's just a feeling, you know, that that I'm overcome with. And so so the sound itself, it's like it's like these decades of a thing. Like it's because I grew up with my grandfather, the fifties and sixties never went away. Like they, it was just a conversation in the house. It was still peanuts being put in the stove for, for the old masons that was at the house playing peanut on Friday mm. and Saturday night, like and the music that they wanted to listen to. And then right. it was the seventies the and eighties, the music my mom wanted to listen to. Um, right. And, and then me with the, you know, nineties to the, I had five decades of a jukebox in here like that's what Ooh. it is so it's it's a it's a historical process that's going on with every song so depending on what i feel a b would need or what i feel like um um a re would need for me i'm just going in pulling inspiration you know from those places of how i felt when that right. music came it's like how do you want to feel do you want to feel like sam cook you is that is that's the, is that the mood we going for Super yeah. moody, sad. It's a, it's a very oppressed time for black mm -hmm. people. Like, how do you want to feel? And so even though you take a song like Love on Top, right? Mm -hmm. Even though Love on Top is Love on Top, um, and it's saying a positive thing, it's a very, the, mo the, the mood it comes from, though, is a very disparaging mood if you really pay attention to it. You know, mm. it's saying all the right things, but out of desperation. And those are the, that's what I, and, and that's what the movement and culture was, especially as blacks. I feel in the '60s, in the decade I, I wasn't even in, to to feel disparaged in a way, but to say the most positive things to get to how we even how we're even here right now. Right. So, 
Yeah, I have those. I have a fill a fill um, jukebox in my brain and in my I guess in my soul that I can just beep beep. And that and that and that has evolved into the sound. And I'm talking about you as an artist right now, not necessarily as a writer so much. And that's what I'm saying though. But but because but but because of that, that's how I write. Like those humbling moments you was just speaking about, the sound, the 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 every now and then prints vibe that you get right, out of those right. 80s that like all those things that, the, and then you take the 90s where you got god oh you got i'm sorry jodeci you got boys to men you have mm -hmm. at the end wrapping that up is even though they don't get their credit you got drew hill wrapping that whole era up there right. going into 112 going into jagged edge like you got a lot of things that have that that were in this bottle that created what the dream thing is Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just about sometimes you can have all the players on the court. And if you're not able to coach it into a good team, there's no wins. So the, the, the thing that you get out of it is everything that I believe in my mind are like good players and can play really, really well. Um, but I needed a coach. And that coach was my grandfather with how to get one thing from one to 100, regardless mm -hmm. of what it is. And so the sound is that. It's just this melanin process of of good music that I've inhabited. That is just like there it is. Let me um let me put this shit together for right. for myself to make it a thing. And so the bedroom shit just come from just come from man my 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 um let's say my upbringing. I don't want to say which parent whatever, but was just very comfortable with being themselves. So when mm -hmm. you say, "Oh man, you so, you good at talking about fucking," it was like it, it was just, it was just that was I, a conversation it, in the house. It was just freeness, like, "Hey man, you know what I'm saying?" Like this, like what going on in there, man? Like go, my uncle go used to, no. you to pull up on me, man, from the time I was about ten, eleven years old, and say shit like, "Hey, what's up, man? You got your pussy yet?" Exactly. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Mean? <laughs> hey, hey don't do that up? nowhere. Hey, don't do that nowhere, but here. <laughs> I'm over there doing that. You come hey, over, you man. bring it over, bring that over here, and I and I Thank think Daddy now I'm like, I'm like, oh man, we go straight to jail right now. Like it's like, oh yeah, let's, let's, let let's get it, you know. Um, definitely, definitely, man. Wow, definitely so, so, different. So how, how did you get from uh, Baker Road, Center Hill, to? the studio because I couldn't find my way there. I didn't know I, I, I never knew where a studio was. Like how did you get your first shot? Cause that shit wow. seemed like a million miles away. Yeah you know I mean from where wow. you come from. So what was the 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 the, the first oh step man there was a, so so I was in a singing group in high school like 11, 12th grade, right? Um mm -hmm. at the same time I was in the band of course and studios wasn't it wasn't like we knew what one was either it was just we ran into this guy i forget his name man uh i, I want to say eddie but i'm not completely sure y'all you know it's always that first guy that has yeah. some type of way into a studio and you're right. like okay cool let's go and record some stuff and those were my first years 96 probably 97 where i was like oh i'm in the studio like this is cool like right and i figured out I, I can't say I figured out everything, but I understood the idea of recording. You know, um, growing up, we had a piano in the in the um, in the in the living room. My grandfather mm -hmm. sold it when I was younger, broke my heart. But even then, man, I understood the recording process no different than pressing record and play on the tape deck, and right. recording yourself with music playing over on the side or getting instrumentals and rapping right. over the instrumentals, and then that right. was your joint. So yo, right. listen to my rap from last night. And I was doing that. That was I was 13, 14 doing that. So once I got in the studio, for real, I didn't see it as a process of overwhelming, you know, disbelief. And evidently it was not as hard as, you know, as your plight to find one. It was just it was just something that I was blessed to, that just happened to me at that time. And, and luckily I wasn't signing it to no silly ass contract or something, you know, <laughs> based on <laughs> trying to get in the studio. Cause you know, at that particular time you do anything yeah. in the studio, you're like, yo, yeah, where, right. you, where I sign at? I need to make some records. And the you best know, thing for us was we weren't 18 yet. Yes, that's very true. 
We wouldn't yeah, make it yet. So they had, had all my through. publishing right now. They had to go through our shit, man. That motherfucking house would look a little different. That's true. <laughs> That's very true. Man. We'd be like in one room for real. Like, hey, this it. This is so it, man. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you ever thought about doing a collaboration album with anybody? Uh, <laughs> that's funny. That's funny as hell. <laughs> um, I, I have, Chip. I, I have. I have actually. I think. I think we thought about doing a collaboration yeah. album. Yeah, I was wondering. Yeah, I've never had that. one. Yeah, me and neither, that, bro. This is where. This is where Chip tells me that he's still waiting on me, ladies and gentlemen. So if you if you really wanted to know, just this, this is this is Chip's layout of the. If he was a comedian, this would be the setup for the joke right here. Be, he asks you the question, <laughs> he allow you to answer the question, knowing he has the answer that's gonna basically make everybody like lose their lose their shit. So yeah, Chip's waiting on on. Can you believe yeah. that big old Chip waiting on? Little old dream, which completely is not ain't, right. The narrative. Ain't I don't no like big the eyes and little use though. Ain't no big like, eyes and little use. It's just I don't those, like the narrative that's going on right now. I don't know what this is. Uh, next question, please, because hey, that man. could be done. Hey man, we ran into a whole lot of things though. We ran into first of all, Corona. This whole this is a whole other thing. I don't even want to talk of about this because before we got here, here, I had to really think about when you hit me the other day because. I'm like, this ain't me. I don't know how you are when somebody's asking you about something and you're like, hold up, right. I don't do that. So what's the, right. like, why would you do that? So I'm thinking and I'm super <laughs> sensitive. I'm super, I'm, tip, I'm so sensitive. Like when it comes to things like that, you have no idea. If I feel like I even rub somebody in a certain time, I'll call like, hey, like, nah, I didn't mean like that. That wasn't that. And they'll be like, chill, dream. Ain't I'm nobody not, tripping, nobody, bro. Ain't nobody even tripping. But I'm yeah. super sensitive. I don't know why. Don't ask me why. And I thought about it all this, like, what's going on? Like, what was I thinking, blah, blah, And I was like, nigga, you in school every day. You probably ain't thinking, you know how it is to wake up, to go to school, and you ain't been to school in about 20? <laughs> like, nigga, is it, the shit ain't, it ain't just a piece of cake to walk in the park. So I had to tell myself, like, oh, yeah, from December, basically, to now, three classes, a billion assignments, which I'm yeah. really happy about right now in my, in my life. And then, of course, Corona shows up, and it's like, I'm just happy I got the out, sex tape four out, because I don't know how I did See, it, to be honest. Now, now, now you speak, what the hell just happened? Sorry, they, so, somebody just want to call. Jaha oh, Johnson want to call in the middle of the show. You say who? Jaha want to call in oh, okay, the middle okay, of the okay. show. One time, one time for the legendary Jaha. Hey, look, man, you speak about you going to school, and we spoke a little bit about your uh, your high class hobbies and habits. Um, they ain't even high class, man. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, 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 man. Come on, man. You, you, you. What are you designing? Women's lingerie or some shit? You doing negligees and shit, bro? No, man. I'm just doing regular. I'm, I'm, I'm just doing regular. They don't need nobody to design no, uh, no underwear. I'm trying to design the clothes that go over underwear. You just leave the underwear off. We don't need <laughs> what you wearing those for. <laughs> we need no love. Like no, naked. Yeah, naked. Naked. So, so, so we see. I've seen you with your mannequins and your fabrics. You know. Yeah, what you saying? see one like, right. There's one on deck. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You got your fucking sewing machines and your silk. Yep, you see my so, yeah, you see my gear. What is all of this for, Dream? What is the vision? The vision is, man, I had this, um, and it wasn't that I thought about it then, but even more started to burn in me. Alaya, um, the designer, Alaya, uh, which I'm sure you know, because everybody knows, if Chip's trying to play this, play this game of he doesn't know who all of the, the, the shit is, and I'm, I'm the nigga that's out here, and whatever. Yeah. He knows all the brands. He knows who does what. So Alaya passed away. And the first time I was in Paris, um, uh, not the first time I was in Paris, but the first time I met him was uh, with Beyonce. We went to his house, and we had we had dinner there. And I'm going through this guy's house. It's gowns, it's gowns after gowns. It's a J Lo gown. There, there's 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 so many things in this space. There's a Rihanna piece. There's so many things in this place, and I just fell in love with the idea that I already love that shit anyway. But I'm like, yeah, this is how this is what I'm feeling like right now. Oh, when you okay. go into my house, it's like, how many, 
gowns and fucking shoes and all kind of shit. And his affinity evidently for women and the space and bodies of a woman um, right. and how that looks what matched up with what, what my thing is, which is takes you to the part of, Oh cool. Dream writes a lot of records about women. Like, yeah. Like, cause it's an adoration, you know, right. of it. So it bleeds into the idea of what fashion is for me. Um, so, so in that idea, that's why, you know, that's why I started. And that's why I went, I was like, you know what, let me, let me do this for real. I want no home. I can go get a, I can go get a job, a creative job anywhere. Like, but right. I don't want no homeboy hookup. I want them to look down and say, oh, there's a degree in that thing. Like he knows so, what the so fuck he's you doing. Loved it. You loved it so much that you decided to go to school for it, right? Right. So what, so what, what, where are you in school at? I'm at I'm at school at Savannah College of Art and Design, which is SCAD. SCAD. Uh, yeah. yeah, which which is which is no joke, by the way. You Ooh. know, it, it's really cool to hold up and say, "Yeah, I go to SCAD." Yeah, that shit ain't easy. <laughs> like, Damn. and it's not easy to get into. And I didn't get into SCAD as the dream, so I ain't want no corners taken, no nothing. Right. Of course, they found out who I was once I was there, and uh, that that's a that's a whole other thing, but. Um, to this, to so this point in time, in the classroom. Yes, not right now, of course, but yeah. yeah I mean, first, when class was in session, when class yeah, was yeah. School, when it's like, back, yeah, when it's back in session, I'm gonna be back up in there because I feel like that's the that's the best way, and I'm super hands on. Like I don't want to be away from people. One, two, I don't want to, I don't want to feel any different, even if it comes with the pressure and idea of of me almost having an intern <laughs> application every day, <laughs> you know, like, Hey man, you can let me, let me intern for you this summer. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, yo man, give, give me an email, man. Let me get you to the right person that does that. I don't mind that because to the point of what I'm trying to do, that's small, you know, like that doesn't bother me at all. People don't bother me. The sneak pictures don't bother me. Like not, it's, I'm good. Yeah. She get on my nerve. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but <laughs> so you're scared. You're much big. So, you're much bigger than I am, T. I'm sure we couldn't even start the class here, if you fuck was in the class. Here. Nobody fuck started the off. class if you sit in the class. They would have to literally put you in your own office and then Knock teach you, off. like literally virtually. So you may as well just stay at home. Nah, man. I think you know what I'm saying. I think that you know that's that says a lot about your character and how seriously you take the craft of whatever it is you you engage in. Yeah, you know I mean, it's a it's a seriousness in that. You dig what I'm saying? Yes. I want to do this shit so much I'm gonna go to school for it. So yeah. you know what I'm saying, regardless of who I am and what else you've known me to do, when I get to doing this, you know I'm dead serious because I took my time out of school for it. Oh man. That's you know what I'm saying that's that that's it. But so you so you are so you go in there and say, listen, I want a major in, in gowns. No, it's not. It's 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 luxury fashion. Luxury fashion, got you. Right. Um, okay. And so, so it's yeah, all kinds of so, fashion there, not just women. Yeah, no, not just. Oh, we gonna have something to wear. Oh, you thought I would? Come on, come on now. It's just based off of those things. You know, the worst thing is to tip is when you go, and they'll make something. I I I, I got the closest thing to it. You know they make Jordans in those certain colors and they don't make them for us? And you like, it's a shoe. What's the big deal? How you know I didn't want to wear that? Well, this just ain't, you know, this royal blue ain't your cut. Like, no, I need you to make that suede royal blue in, for me. I need right. that. So how do you know I don't want Madonna printed on a, on a hoodie as a man? Like, how do you know that? Right. You, you don't know. Like, so, so that's what I'm saying. So for, for, especially for us guys that are super, super secure with who we are, like, it's like, you know, like I can wear anything as long as, as long as my nuts can breathe, I'm good. <laughs> you know, like I don't want that, I don't want that wrapped around my, my ass, you know, and shit where it's like, they can't even, <laughs> you know, you can't even run away fast, you know, but, yeah. <laughs> but, but things that are all of that high fashion and in that place, and I have such a respect and an adoration for it. Like, of course, I want to want to put on certain things and wear certain jackets and coats that are cut. And this, it's like this. Um, there's this pink coat that I bought bought my wife. It's like um powder pink, and I'll go and I got got it for her. Um, and I was like, yo, y'all don't make this in 
in men's, it was like, no, nah, we got, well, we do have a super large. So I was like, yeah, let me get that. Let me get mm. whatever, whatever that Kodak, bring it out here. So, so, so how long you got to go to get your degree? Um, it'll be next year, next summer sometime. If I can expedite it and actually get the, take more classes than I'm supposed to, supposed to be taking. Cause right. I'm just trying to get, I'm just trying to get to that bachelor's. Like I don't, I don't, uh, I don't think, of course, I could get a major. I just don't think because the, ma the major to me at this point in my life would be all the shit that we already know. We've already did so many things that and met so many people. It's, it's just those are phone calls and, and things that um, it's not about skipping a thing. It's just real life experience trumps, you know, school at a certain point. Whereas like, well, nobody can teach you that. Now you got to go and learn that. And, and school tries to do a good job because when you're young, you, you haven't had those experiences. But for, for somebody like myself, I'm like, man, I've already been helped that person design that tour. I already did this thing. Like I've already, I've already been in that room, you know, with yay. Like I'm, I'm good, you know, in that mm. space. So, so <clears throat> more, more of the idea is um, let me get my two years. Um, and just cause I won't, I want to respect the craft you know, a fashion, like period, you know, so, right. and I know that it's a real close knit community or where they don't play about that shit, like, and they shouldn't. And I think actually, you know, I would love it be, to be more like that with music versus you right. just, cool, I'm gonna just do this shit. I ain't gotta know what the fuck I'm doing. Like, fuck it. Like, and, but, I you mean, know, it's a hustle, like it's our way too, out. Yeah. So I, under, I understand it and I get it, but everything can't be, everything can't be a hustle. It gotta be something. You gotta be serious about this shit. You gotta be serious about something. You, man. you can't be just serious about it. Yeah. You gotta take this shit seriously, and you gotta treat it with respect. You know what I mean? And I think I needed. I think I needed that more than anything. I needed right. to face the seriousness of, all right, get in this shit and walk it all the way through to the end. All right. So I, t I said at the beginning of, of, of this episode, like, so the the, the purpose of expeditiously is to have a conversation. That that you know the the not the ones that's comfortable and convenient, but but you know the ones that can push the culture forward and break down the doors and give the information to the people that need it, that's in the situation where they can use it. So tell me, what would you tell twenty year old dream? Wow! Based on what you know right now, what you've learned so far, nothing. <laughs> it's not the same story chip it's not the same words then it's not the same music then it's not you right. change one little thing you change everything you know Damn. Uh, i don't want thing. i didn't want it to happen no more faster or later than it did you know like i remember meeting la for the first time he said how the hell could i miss somebody like you in atlanta like atlanta's my how did I miss it? And I was like, I was a pretty still individual. I stayed in the same place, writing the same shit, doing my same. I have, I have my routines of how I do shit. I'm, that part is some old fashioned ass shit. Like I'm not the studio yeah. hopping ass nigga. Like I'm like, right. wherever I'm at, that's where I'm at. You know? And so it took a lot of years to hone in on that. So that's why I wouldn't touch it. Like, it's almost like you don't want to. It's like, don't leave it right there. You know what it is? It was low and the antenna didn't work right. And once you yeah. get it fixed in a position, don't touch that motherfucker. Don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> the braids on, it look good. <laughs> don't touch it. Or you get fucked up. Like, don't touch it. What is it that you it's, think is wrong with the industry today, bro? Um, I don't, I don't want to necessarily say wrong. I think what could be better about it is that we're more connected from our standpoint to um, how people are taught certain things about, even about contract shit that we still going through that we shouldn't even be going through. It's like, why y'all still having contract disputes? Like people did that way back yonder for, for this. And, right. and not only that, that's one, two, don't get yourself into something though and then go whine it once you're in it. Like right. that's the whole point of asking questions. So it's like, we're not able to speak to the youth before they even get to that point. There's no, there's no, um, you know, they have outlets. There's no inlet 
to right. us for real, you know. And I don't mean a one on one thing. There's no place for for people to go, a platform for them to go to say, hey, what about X, Y, Z? So we can at least say, hey, I wouldn't even do that. Oh, yeah, this is good for your situation. For your situation, you should probably take this hundred. Mm. For somebody else, though, that may not be like, uh, I'll take 25 and sign a, a deal that retains sure, your sure. master. And that, yeah, yeah. And that, like, and it's, so it's like, it's those small things that changes how people feel when they walk away from the industry or while they're even in it. And then that changes the art and that changes what kind of artists we get. So we could yeah. get somebody that's like Mike and we end up not getting right. it because so many shiesty things go on in a certain place and there's not a father always there to look over, you know, their son or daughter in a, in a, in a contract situation to protect right. them from that, you know? Sure. And so, I think they don't that always part. know themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I, just think, um, I mean, man, for me, I mean, I just, I honestly. Because we talked about this. We had a conversation. Yeah, I know it. I think, I think, man, we, I think we've gotten into the habit more so of, uh, of finding excuses uh, more than we find solutions. Yep. That, you know what I'm saying? That, that part that and that's the part I can't stand. Like and that's almost it almost goes directly to with with somebody asked me the other day about politics and they was asking me about um Democrats in a way and I said, Look, the point is though to stop making fucking excuses. Like what the fuck you gonna do? Give me the plan. Come up right. with some shit. Like stop right. whining when them motherfuckers do some other shit. Like when they do something crazy, like stop whining about it. One, two Stop being so motherfucking sensitive. Like, stop acting she like... She ain't gonna stop till we stop it. That's true. Because we can't live here in America it. and act like this motherfucker wasn't seized and taken from other motherfuckers that were slain. You know, um, and I don't mean that in no derogatory sense. Taken from people that were slain, like, like for, for no reason. And this yeah. is where you live and where you work. And that's not a good thing, but we can't live like it doesn't matter. Like, you're Simply still doing, that. you on the same soil that that happened on. Like, Simply you that. know what this is? Yeah. How, how, how you start is how, is how it finishes. And yeah. that's how it's still going. So it's like, until right. you stop that, or you got a solution for me, I don't want to hear no excuses about one thing. or uh, Like, I don't want to hear, especially coming from where I came from. I just don't really want to, there's no Illuminati helping me out. Ain't no special yeah, thing. I don't have a different you God than nobody else. About us? <laughs> <laughs> a loop of who? A loop of who? They trying to get me. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Shoot, like, stop. Stop with all the excuses. Of something magical happened for one person or another. The only right. thing I've seen that people hate to give, people hate People hate to really realize that. Give your credit. Hard work, sacrifice, and dedication is what separates you from where the fuck you want to be. And that's all. That's all it is. That's all it. Sacrifice, dedication. That's it. And that's, I tell myself that. I tell other people. That's why I never counted nobody's money. Nobody's nothing. I'll look and see exactly how hard I got to work based on how hard Chip is working. Right. That's the extent. Like, oh, okay. Okay, cool. All right. So, shoot, we can make money over here. Well, how you yeah. know? Because he just made money over here. We ain't doing yeah. nothing to his money. His money's fine. He's secure with his. Let me go. I can do the same thing with mine, though. And so we don't, that space overall is what I mean. Like, so when we don't have a platform for that, and that's just not, and I I'm only using it in music terms because that's what the question was. But in the context to our culture, that's what the problem is. We just don't ever know what we're getting ourselves into. And we think that it's just supposed to be, it's like some magical going to happen for the things you don't know. And it's like, no, nigga, yeah. you need to ask a question. Yeah, you speak, and you speak a little bit. You speak, you know, uh, a little bit about business and uh, earning money, maintaining wealth. Uh, but people don't know how, you know, how savvy your business acumen has become. <laughs> you know Motherfuckers have no idea of the shit you're into. Um, I don't know what you. I don't know what you talking about. Well. It is to be No, said. I know exactly what you're talking about, but I don't know what you're talking about. You had a no, hand that's... in that Popeye's chicken sandwich, didn't you? <laughs> you had a hand in that shit, Dream. You 
<laughs> Yo, man, all all I said was the the, the sandwich period. First of all, is the, <laughs> the one of the greatest things that's ever invented. It's like, well, why? Why does it help chicken so much? I was like, I'm gonna tell you why. Just give me a second. You cannot eat Popeyes on the way home regularly. But if you put a bun on that motherfucker, it's handheld. <laughs> a mobile meal. It's a napkin in itself. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, that's what's so dope about it. So I've been literally, man, before before this thing happened, yo, I, yo, I've been the 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 allotment of Popeyes that I can actually set up. I'm down to like six more that I can set up for this for this year, which is probably not gonna happen now. But the point was I wanted all six of mine to be Popeye's Express, which has never been done. I was like, I want Popeye's Express. And he's like, what you mean? I was like, I want to sell the Popeye's wings, a couple other items on the joint. I wanted to be set up almost like a checkers, and I want to sell a sandwich. I was like, I don't want nothing to do with nothing else. And by you don't the want way, no find and me. Thighs and all that shit. That's it. I want to be the new, new J.R. Crew. The wings, the fries, and the biscuits. Period. <laughs> That's it. I don't want no problem with nothing else. And then, by the way, while y'all doing that, find me an alternative meal for people that's not going to eat you because I know it's coming. Like, yeah. I'm getting close to eating myself. Hey, I'll come, eat on come on down to Bankhead Seafood. You come on down to Bankhead Seafood. You know what I'm saying? You don't want no chicken. Y'all come on, oh, man. Oh, definitely go there. there. Oh, man. Are you, oh, man. Do you, you remember that walk from Grove Park? Yes. Over there at the school? Absolutely. Oh. Oh, <laughs> you got your two dollars ready? Oh, yes, sir. They give you those look. They give you two two uh hush puppies. You mad? You so mad? Mm -hmm. Those hush puppies gone immediately. Man, and, and see, it ain't many motherfuckers who from our community, who from our neighborhood that we can have these kinds of conversations with. You know what I'm saying? Um, how many Popeyes do you own for the people? Eleven. Dream owns eleven Popeyes, people. 11 motherfucking Popeyes. So while y'all running out there to them motherfucking chicken sandwiches, <laughs> this man just bought a new house. Stop you know, it. Well, Stop it. Kind, kind of, sort of, not really, but really. I don't know what you're talking about. You sound crazy <laughs> right now. But now, nah, man, I think that that, that, but that, that, that is important for the next generation to see. Because Dream could be Absolutely. Just Dream nope. could just be happy with the money that he make off being Dream. Dream could be happy with the publishing he has from the songs he did from Watch the Throne, Rihanna, Kanye, Beyonce, and not to mention your own shit. But you said, no, I would like to invest in a different uh, uh, area of business so I can have multiple streams of revenue uh, right. and passive income. That's important right. for kids, you know what I'm saying, who who ain't got no money now, but right. gonna run into some money in some years from now. So they'll have in their mind understand what they need to be doing. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's I think that's the How I do think you get into that. I think the currency overall is 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 knowledge, right? So regardless of the the, the way you're paid, whether it's money um or relationships. Mm -hmm. Which relationships is the new currency to me? Like, is that, mm -hmm. and that's what kind of happens once you gain a certain amount of wealth. Right. It's like, who I know can make this. Who can I get with to do this thing to get it done expeditiously? You know. And so, <laughs> so I see how this did, happened yeah. was I was presented with the idea of um, of Burger King in like two thousand and eight or nine, I want to say, and. And they were, I think it was like half a million to kind of get in to get started. And I was like, all right, cool. At the same time, I, I remember uh, buying my house straight out. Like, I didn't want, I don't like bills. I don't like nothing. I don't like nothing attached to nothing. So, um, and I only started like even welcoming the idea of that just for things that were, don't spend your own capital, you know, and that's another thing you grow into. It's like, don't spend your own capital when you can do this particular thing. Right. With it, especially when when you're gaining a, a a a thing, an asset that you're owning that can pay for itself. If something does happen, if something does happen, you get this percentage, and the rest pays the thing off, and you still clear. You wash your hands, you keep it moving. So mm -hmm. the idea with Burger King was one of those assets where 
all right, cool. Let me let me get into this. Every year it's gonna probably clear a certain amount once it catches up to that to the to the first initial amount. And then every year I think we just got more Burger Kings, got more. How many got Burger more. Kings you got, Dre? So the this is what this is what happened. I'm getting to the story. So Burger King bought Popeyes, which is huh? how we even got in the idea of, hey, since you guys are Burger King owners. This thing has came up, and it had to because your your owners already to be able to get into the Popeyes fri- franchise. And of course, I jumped at it because I'm like, "What? Chicken? Popeyes? Are you kidding? Chicken? Chicken? <laughs> Please, yeah, get you. Let me get it." And so that was just an easy, you know, that, that coming from where we come from. It's the same thing, man. It's not. It's just different brands and different names on buildings. It's nothing different that we didn't do like earlier on in life. It's just to act, to keep the activity going and don't. I think for the kids who watch to not look at brands and companies and things and don't think that they didn't start with an idea that was super just to themselves. Nike was just an idea to a person that is just like you. It wasn't, and so I don't look at things like, oh man, that's whoo, that's crazy. I'm like, no, we just don't have one yet. Like so, let's go and get right. it. Right. You know, anything so, humans have done, humans can do. And and that's that's how I wake up every day. Like it's no, whatever, whatever I want to feel like put being serious about. I think I can get it done, especially with the relationships I have now. There's, it's like super. There's certain things I just won't be able to get done based on time. You know, on on Earth, unless I live to be two hundred, which I don't even want two hundred years in this place. But <laughs> my, my 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 children and grandchildren should be able to, you know, to to keep that you know legacy alive. Of if that's what you want to do, then go do it. But but do it great. Or just don't start doing it at all. Like like don't do nothing halfway. Right. So, so that's what the Burger King, the Popeyes thing was. It was just a thing, and get, graduating to the next space in that area was was don't do nothing halfway. It's like, how much you made? How much is it just sitting there now? Like, you don't even have to touch it. Like, it's like, cool. Let it do what it's going to do. Who who do you think in your life, and I know you speak a lot about your grandfather, and I grew up around my granddaddy too, so I can understand a lot of the shit you're talking about. But who do you think it was that gave you the freedom to dream, no pun intended? The freedom wow. to dream the way you do, you know what I mean? Because you have very ambitious visions and dreams, and I think that I think that to who you are. I think the defining moment in that tip came from my mom. I have a picture in the next room hanging up with my mom, and I point to it every time when one of these little knuckleheads want to do something <laughs> that Can doesn't make it? any. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, um, whenever they want to do something that doesn't make any sense, tip. And so I'm like, on in this picture, she took she had cancer. Mm. I want you to look at her resolve and her idea of herself in this picture. Mm. She, 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 knew she, she, was, looks, she looks at peace. She knew she was going to pass. She knew it. Mm. And her dream, her, her, it wasn't even, I can't even say that was the word. It was the idea that, okay, cool, but this still can't stop me, which the point of my existence means that exactly. It's like, you didn't stop her from dreaming because that's who I am. Right. So her resolve was that. So my dream was, uh, was elevated because of the, the death of that, of that woman. And just saying like, oh, well, and, and even just going through something like, I'm not going to go through something like that again. Uh, uh, hopefully to never, ever, you know, lose a child outside of that. Like I can't experience that again. That's a, that's a one way ticket. That's right. a, that's a thing, you know, you so one of those. period. That's, that's a thing, you know? So, so for me, I felt like I went through that, um, that exploded the idea of, Hey man, do it and be serious about it. Cause you don't know when your time's up. Number one. And number two, that this is your picture of your mom dreaming for you even when you couldn't dream for yourself. So that's where it, that was the defining moment in that. And I can never think back to a spot because that was the spot. It's just, it wasn't, it, it wouldn't be wrote in a script that way. So I, at first I would kind of ignore that that's what it was and more so felt the sadness from that right. and not feeling the idea that 
no, nah, man, this is the dream. Like, this is when it was born. Right. This is when, you, when your idea of yourself was born in this place of this woman. So tell me now if I'm hearing it right, because this is what I hear. It feels to me like by the sacrifices that were that were made by your mom and mm-hmm. the 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 way she empowered you and left you, you know, uh with the example of, of her action. Right. Almost makes you feel obligated to dream big. Period. Period. And without and without the obligation of the word work, a right. job, like I don't even feel it. You know, right. as people people wake up that love me and that I love that wake up in my home. My wife is waking up. She's like, I don't know how you how you do it. And I was like, Yeah, I don't know how she did it. But mm. it's getting done one way or another. <laughs> and with a smile on my face. You mm. it, it's no day she wake up, I'm doing something that looks like it. I make it hard to frown. That's right. You know, it's it's hard to walk around and try to figure out a way to like, oh, there's something to do. Let me figure out how to frown about it. Like, you want to get me upset or in a place? After right. I, if I do something, and when I ain't got to do it, by the way, mm. and I'm like, cool, let's just get it. If there's a baby up at four, cool, I'm up. Like, let's do it. Like, right. what, whatever it is, if it, it, with a smile on my face, it ain't bothering me, not one. And you shouldn't be bothered either. Nobody should. Yeah. There's an opportunity here to do something, and that's already a blessing in itself. Mm. Uh, so y- y- you you've always maintained a certain mystique, a certain mystique about yourself. <laughs> you know I mean? I'm really not that mysterious, though. I know that nigga. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? When motherfuckers, when motherfuckers think about you, it's almost kind of like, you know, they you know they speak of you as, you know, like they heard you were here. You know what I'm saying? Right. They heard things about you that they don't really like. Did you plan on having that sort of mysterious aura around you? Is that is that strategic? Um, no, but it's worked out. I'm t- <laughs> <laughs> in, in one way, it gets a sucker ass nigga off your phone, right? Like, cause right. the thing that leads in the door is, hey, man, and they got they, people understand when somebody says it's like the yes or no guy, right? So I ain't gonna bullshit nobody. Like, it's no, it's no bullshit. I'm super hard on myself, and I know that. So once you're confident in in your in yourself and what you're trying to do, like I don't mind helping anybody. You call me, you on the side of the road, nigga, I'm coming through. Like I know what I've done. Like I don't, I was, I was the. The, the same boy that was 14, 15, driving my grandfather because he couldn't, he couldn't see out of one of his eyes to the, gro- to the grocery store, to the bank, to CVS, and then leaving him driving a great uncle to do the same exact things when other niggas was outside playing. So right. I know my own humility. So you're not going to trick me out of something that's happened already. It's like, no, I've already kind of did that. So when a sucker ass nigga, <laughs> like, had these, um, stories that lead to a place that they probably got to know at some point because the shit went right or it wasn't whatever mm-hmm. it was instead of just respecting it saying like all right cool he, we gonna go do the next thing or whatever the next thing is um and so those things and and through women as well like follow i mean they lead in a door and when you ask that person like do you know i'm knowing no and they'll be like well i heard that He's like no 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 i need you to do you know him Nah, well, I can't really say that I know him. It's like, all right, cool, because I know that nigga. And yeah. either that's him or that's not him, you know. Right. And so it does, though, keep t- t- it does keep the 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 people who mean no real well or not ready to work or whatever. They, it keeps that shit way over to the left. And so right. I appreciate Feel that the bullshit. Yes, it's it's a definitely a filter that I did not try to do, but I'm so happy about it. I swear yeah. to you, I'm like. Yes. That awkward, that cool. awkward silence is a motherfucker. It's you a motherfucker. You know, <laughs> motherfucker, when a motherfucker get to start, like, you know, trying to figure out how to ask you for something. Right. Man, like, yeah, you know, because, you know what I'm saying, man, you, you know, and you be like, I don't know, tell me. And it ain't going to stop. Oh, man, never mind, man. Don't worry yeah, about ne- it, man. You, right. right. You That's see it. what I'm saying? It, and it's, it doesn't stop what me. I'm from- putting down. It doesn't stop me from ever doing what I'm going to do. Somebody asked me, called me to ask me to take care of something. 
and I felt like they could have took care of it. If it's a if it's a cousin calling about, hey man, I need help with X Y Z. In that case, I'm just like my grandfather. He'll give you so much shit before you know the yes is coming, but you have to think twice about asking him for it. You're like, oh damn, this nigga gonna ask me every question to how I got to this space. Especially if I told you before, hey yo nigga, don't do that because that's yeah. gonna lead to this thing, and then it's gonna lead to this. Just get a new car, man. But it's a note that come with it. Yeah, I hear what you're saying, but you go pay like twenty grand getting that fixed. Mm. Man, you might as well just get get you a note. It's the same money. You got the same bread right here. Uh, now I'm gonna get this car. Then the car fuck up, and then they hit you like, "Hey man, I need help with a down payment." You like, "Oh, uh, what? What you do with the bread? Oh man, the engine went out. The transmission went out." And you like, "Didn't I tell you, Nick? Nobody wants to hear the didn't yeah. I tell you not to? Nobody want to hear that." <laughs> <laughs> Even though I'm gonna get it done. They don't want to hear that, and I'm I'm happy about that part. I'm not just gonna let you just go through some shit. Like, no, it's not happening. You got to hear some shit. This shit really does hit different, man. Um, I'm gonna let you go, bro. I know I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I appreciate you, man, for being a guest here on Expeditiously. You man, it's been fun. Man. This man, is amazing. It's long overdue. You dig what I'm saying? And uh, amazing. That's that's why we didn't do it. See, when you do something first, then it's hard to do it like a million times. So when you right. do it and you just kind of wait, then it's a regular conversation. So then it's right. like, oh cool, I'm hit, I'm I'm a hit, I'm hit dreaming like sixty days, do the same thing again about some other shit. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna just get like get me a little co-host thing over on the side, like uh, my co-host for the day. Yeah, man, why not? Come on in. You know See what, what I'm mean? saying? Yeah. I'm, looking hey, that's... Way, I'm looking for a way to lay off of some of this work, man. Yeah. I, I'm I'm sure. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I can't because hey, that pass first of all, that's not responsibility. Easy. It's not easy what you're doing, by the way. Well, you now nah, and shit. I mean, it's still you gonna pretty, get it done. It's still pretty organic, man. I don't feel like you know, like no. Oh, organic doesn't mean that it ain't hard work. That's like being a farmer and saying it's organic to grow greens outside. You still gotta pick them motherfuckers out the ground. Yeah, it might be a hundred degrees today. That's pretty hard. That makes sense. So, that makes sense. so you doing the work? It's the same shit with school. This is like yes, organic. I love it. This shit ain't easy though. <laughs> I got like three assignments, dude. As soon as I get off this motherfucker, I'm like, I'm dying. I'm like, yo, somebody find Damn. me a Red Bull and some tequila ASAP. Hey man, shit. I'm gonna let y'all. I'm gonna let you get to your homework now. Now, one of the traditions we have here at Expeditiously is the word of the week. All right. The word, the word of the week is usually a word that. Do I get to pick uh, it? No, 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 no. You ain't got to take it. Oh, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. Okay. But Jay noted is a word that, that kind of, uh, I would say, derives from the conversation or something about the guest. Okay. And the word that I came up with to you. Mm-hmm. Haberdashery. So... Definitely deriving from the idea and word habit, correct? No, 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 no. Yeah, see, yeah, see, you only have to, you don't have to even, I'm going to give you the definition. Okay, Hab please. Haberdashery, okay? It, okay. Uh, it, is, it is commonly related to fashion, and it is basically defined as men's clothing and accessories. Oh, wow. Like your closet is your haberdashery. You dig what wow. I'm saying? Wow. You know, yeah. Never uh, heard that word before. Yeah, yeah. I Habitat. appreciate it. You dig what I'm saying? Uh, wow. Uh, so, and I, I guess I use it in a sentence, you know what I'm saying? So the people who are paying attention to us right now, they can go on and act like they didn't do the word all they like. Um, so, <laughs> the dream's illustrious career did not compare to his even more detailed haberdashery in his luxurious home. That's dope, man. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. No, that's dope. So that was the word, that was the word of the week, haberdashery. That motherfucker just for you, nigga, dedicated to you, my bankhead, Grove Park partner. Yeah, I mean, and shit, man, no matter, no matter where she go, bro, I always, nigga, remember you from the 307 and the 312. Yes, you know the saying? 312, the 312, you know baby. That was, th th those were the bus numbers at Grove Park yes. that we wrote. 
Yes. You know I mean? So I wish you nothing but love, respect, and success in the future. And whenever you get around to it, man, we'll go ahead and put that project together. Yes, and sir. Shit. And from there, man, the rest will be history, man. All right. So thank you once again, guys. This has been Expedition. Watch your favorite episodes of Expeditiously right now on the Expeditiously YouTube page.